there, everyone. Hardclaw Productions here. Sorry that I haven't been uploading that much after the finale of the Wizard of Oz parody arc in my group role-playing texting adventure series. I was on vacation, and I just couldn't make any YouTube videos over there. But I honestly enjoy myself over there, and I am now back to bring you another Bob the Builder video. The Snowed Under review surprisingly did really well when it came out over a month ago, and it now has reached 2,000 plus views by the time of this recording. I am hoping to have the motivation to make reviews on the other Bob the Builder movies when I get the chance, since you all seem to enjoy my rather interesting review on Snowed Under. With all that blabbering out of the way, let's get on to the main topic of this video. The way I would describe watching episodes from Bob the Builder is that they are enjoyably simple. The ideas may look and sound simple on paper, but the characters that carry out those plots is what makes the episodes really enjoyable without being too complex within a running time of 8 minutes. But if the episode itself is really boring, tedious, or painfully infuriating, then it becomes a problem. In Bob the Builder, from what I've seen while binge watching the show, there are barely any episodes I flat out despise. Even through the Ready City Build era, the episodes are inoffensive at best, despite getting hit with the generic baby show curse when entering into the world of CGI. Today, we are going to look at two episodes that are different from each other, but they are prime examples of screwing up a main character nonetheless, and I'll compare them to determine what is my least favorite episode out of my favorite Bald the Builder character, Rolly. Rolly brings the house down from season 15 versus Rolly's Rovers from season 17. Before I begin my short reviews on these two episodes, I might do a separate video explaining why I love Rolly so much and why he sticks out to me the most out of all the characters in Bob the Builder. Because I want to explain in this video that any character that I have a strong fondness towards is not perfect and it has its duds. Like in my Stone Under review, I love Scoob as the can-do crew's team leader. But I didn't like how he was a toxic freak towards his crewmates in the movie. So I hope you all get an understanding on what I am going to be doing in this video while I review the bottom two episodes, in my opinion, where Rolly was the main character and how the characterization in the episode screwed him up in two different ways. And finally, I want to ask one simple question. Which one of these two Rolly episodes is my all-time least favorite? Let's find out. We shall get this video started by reviewing the season 15 episode Rolly brings the house down. In this episode, rain poured down hard all over Sunflower Valley the night before, and Mike seems to enjoy himself as he spins across the mud as he calls it skidsies. Rolly dared himself to perform a skidsy too until he spun out of control to ram himself into the machine shelter, causing it to become destroyed. After being told off by Bob, Rolly starts to blame Muck for making him destroy the shelter, while the red dump truck claims that he didn't do anything, feeling falsely accused. Bob and the others started building the new machine shelter, while Muck tries to reason with Rolly, but the roll roller won't get over how he got in trouble and claims to not be his friend anymore. When Muck makes a mistake, Rolly gets jealous of him on how the dump truck could get away from bad luck while he got in trouble for knocking down the machine shelter earlier. Muck and Rolly keep on getting into each other's skins as they continue bickering while Dizzy tries to get them to stop. When the metal doors arrived for the new machine shelter, Muck accidentally bumped into Rolly to make his door land on some metal to make it look like a ramp. Rolly dares Muck to go over the ramp, but it gets destroyed because of Muck's weight of his body flattening the door. Muck tells Bob and Wendy that he made a stupid mistake, despite Rolly claiming that it wasn't his fault and it was his fault for making him do it. After the new machine shelter is completed, the machines love it. Rolly apologized to Muck for falsely accusing him when everything that happened today was his fault but then he tried to make it up to his friend by letting the dump truck have his spot. Then the two machines started arguing again on who is more at fault, until Bob and Wendy settled them down and reassured Muck that he has a spare door. 
and the episode ends with Muck and Rolly making amends with each other, and they had a nice fondful laugh together that it is neither of them at fault. Like I said before, barely any Bald the Builder episode I've seen from the original era is not below the standards of bad or terrible, and this is no exception. But the biggest problem I have with this episode is that Rolly was stupidly mean towards Muck in this episode. All this episode was showcasing is that Rolly was being really petty that he got in trouble for destroying the machine shelter while falsely accusing Muck for making him do it. The conflict itself is honestly really stupid because it gives off the notion that we need to bring back the let's blame Muck for no reason cliche. They did it back in Snowed Under, and it is honestly getting old seeing this cliché happen again in the latter half of the Project Build It saga. Seeing my boy Rolly become jerkishly out of character in this episode made me pretty disappointed with him, because he is normally not one to get upset that easily. Rolly is a machine that is very chill with everything around him, and he knows when to own up to the mistakes he made. Not try and blame others for getting himself in trouble when he did so himself. This isn't the Rolly I know, and that is saying something on how the show managed to screw up my favorite character very badly. But... What saves the episode from being terrible is that I get ironic enjoyment out of this episode. Sure, what the episode presented was really petty and stupid, but the total experience isn't infuriating enough to make me get really upset by just watching it. It's like watching an episode from the Nitrogen Thomas era. I know how bad it is, but I enjoy it ironically. Sometimes. Rolly and Muck were a bunch of idiots in this episode, and I honestly quite like it. The way they caused an argument on who is more at fault was just so stupid that it was pretty funny. Because Rolly was simply trying to make it up to Muck for making him squash his metal door, while the dump truck had to take it the wrong way. Everyone else is in character, especially Dizzy. I like how she is representing how I feel while watching the episode and tries to get Muck and Rolly to stop their petty arguing. In conclusion, Rolly Brings the House Down is an episode where it is obviously very flawed, but it is enjoyably stupid. Rolly was horribly out of character, Muck was being blamed for no reason, the two fighting is really petty, and the conflict had to rehash a boring cliché that is getting old at this point. But no matter how many times I've seen this episode, I still get ironic enjoyment out of it, even after my latest rewatch for the review. So, I give Rolly Brings the House Down a 5 out of 10. It is an episode where I think it could be enjoyable, but despite it being very flawed. Also, this episode showed me that even my favorite character can have its bad appearances, and how I don't like every major role they make in the series. Now that I covered this episode, let's take a look at Rolly's Rovers from Season 17. Since I'll be reviewing a Ready City Build episode, I'll be referring to Scratch as Discolor Benny. Because one, I think it is funny saying it, and two, it is pretty obvious that Scratch is just an inferior Benny. So let's begin. In this episode, Bob and the team are asked to fix the Fix Sims soccer field, so the kids could play over there. Bob put Rolly in charge of cleaning off the dirt from the field, while Mr. Benley decided to have the Roll Roller be the team mascot. Rolly thinks too much of being the mascot that he didn't look at the directions to clear up the soccer field. Rolly assigns Scoop, Muck, and Discolor Benny to move all the dirt towards the middle of the field while he does his thing of coming up with chance. The dirt gets in the way when Discolor Benny throws the soccer ball, and Rolly orders the diggers to move the dirt away from the middle of the field while he continues his chance, much to the diggers' dismay. Bob eventually catches on what is going on, where the white lines are not noticeable because of the dirt. Rolly apologizes and looks at the plans again to finally understand what he and the others are supposed to do. Rolly sang a little chant song to get everyone moving, with the diggers cleaning up the remaining piles of dirt, Bob and Wendy painting the white lines, while the roll roller rolls the ground flat. The episode ends with the gang and the kids playing their soccer game on the fixed soccer field. Holy god, this episode was a mess! 
it doesn't help from the fact that this episode was written by everyone's favorite Nitrogen Thomas writer, Sharon Miller. You could obviously tell that even in Bob the Builder, Sharon Miller finds a way to shove in her half-assed writing in at least one of these episodes. But, it is not that bad compared to a typical Nitrogen Thomas episode, where the characters' this dialogue can carry on without any form of alliteration or rhyming. With all that said, let's discuss how this episode screwed up Rolly's character here. Rolly was a mindless idiot in this episode. The way he didn't follow the directions the first time is what makes the problem stick out in the open, and you can predict right away that Rolly is going to cause a mess before it actually comes. That is not what I want in storytelling because the decisions make the characters incredibly dumbed down. Rolly might not be the most intelligent machine in the world, but at the very least he doesn't let anything get in the way of a job, and knows that he should focus on what he does best. Rolly leaving Scoop, Muck, and Discolor Benny to move away all the dirt on their own without any proper direction, to put it, just made me roll my eyes that I told myself that this isn't the Rolly I know and he is better than this. I think what the Thomas and Tugs man said in his Ready Steady Bill retrospective video is the best way to describe Rolly's character in this episode. By his explanation, but in my words, the episode does try to get Rolly's character right, but it also gets his character wrong. Rolly does love to come up with songs as he works, but he doesn't make that the top priority during a job. What Rolly did in this episode is just unbelievably idiotic. A previous episode did this characterization of Rolly a lot better in Project Build It, called Rolly's new friend. Ha! My only childhood memory of this show. Over here, Rolly at least acknowledges that he does have a job to do while he is focusing a new bird friend he made. It showcases how Rolly is still able to do what he is doing, but not make him an idiot where he does have a job to do. Oh no, Birdie! We're building a brand new road here! It's gonna be noisy and dusty! Please move for your friend, Rolly! The earth is in the way of the ball. So, you have to move it off the pitch, yeah. Move it again. But we just moved it here. Move the earth and put it down. If that's wrong, just change it round. <sighs> this episode just did really wrong when it really could have gotten his character right at the same time. Now let's talk about the rhyming in this episode. In my opinion, the rhyming doesn't destroy the experience for me. Compared to a typical Nitrogen Thomas episode, where the characters' dialogue was nothing but constant alliteration and rhymes where Thomas and the others are trying way too hard to be Dr. Seuss, this episode is honestly more tame when it comes to the usage of rhyming. The rhymes really does while he performs his chants honestly works within the context. Using rhymes within a chant or a song can make the tune catchy and creative, and that is how I would describe Rolly's chants in the episode. I would honestly take this episode over any Nitrogen Thomas episode or the reboot of by any means, because the rhyming doesn't curse any of the characters' dialogue and they talk to each other like normal. That is why I kind of disagree on the Thomas and Tuxman's view on Rolly's Rovers, being how the rhyming ruins the whole experience like it is just as uncreative like a Nitrogen Thomas episode. The rhyming was used in a way where it can make sense, and the rhymes themselves were honestly pretty catchy. It just wasn't used properly where it affects Rolly's character at the end of the day. In concept, the rhyming has the tendency to work within the episode's favor, but used in a way where it messes up the mindset of Rolly in the episode makes it fail. Rolly's Rovers, in my opinion, is an episode where it was obviously cursed by Sharon Miller's half-assed writing technique, but it is really tame compared to a Nitrogen Thomas episode. You all might think I dislike this episode from what I said throughout this review. Well, I don't hate it. It is an episode where the idea is there and can work, but it wasn't pulled off very well because of how it messes up the main character upset episode. 
Rolly was a mindless idiot in this episode, and the story structure was just as predictable where it does fall into the same trap as a Nitrogen Thomas episode, where Bald the Builder is not like that in the first place. But, this episode isn't as annoying or boring as I thought coming into this rewatch for this review. Not an episode that I love, but I don't hate it either. I know it tried to get Rolly's character right. And I know that Sharon at least tried to incorporate rhyming in a way where it can work, but she did all that half-assly, and that is why this episode is one of my beloved favorites of Rolly, next to the previous episode I reviewed. So I give Rolly's Rovers also a 5 out of 10. It is an episode where it has a good enough idea to work, but it wasn't executed very well. Now that I reviewed every episode of this video, let's figure out the answer to my simple question that I put out at the beginning. Which one of these episodes is my all-time least favorite Rolly-centered episode? It's kind of hard to choose because these two episodes are kind of similar to each other in terms of rating and having a mix of good and bad in them. But, in my wholehearted opinion, my least favorite Rolly centered episode out of the entire classic era of Bald the Builder is. Rolly's Rovers. Yeah, how original am I? Now, let me explain why this episode wins the title as my least favorite, but only by a slight margin from the other episode I reviewed in this video. It's not because it was written by Sharon Miller. It's not because the episode has rhyming in it. It's not even how the episode screwed up Rolly's character to make him a brain-dead idiot. It's how the idea for the episode was squandered because it could have worked for Rolly's character. What I mean is that Rolly's hobby is to sing little songs as he works, and him coming up with catchy chants to cheer on a soccer team is within his character to do. It's just that the episode made Rolly take this trait and make it his top priority when he does have a job to do. I could see that there was some effort put into the episode, and it could have been one of my favorites. But seeing how apparent Sharon's writing was prevalent in this episode, it is honestly pretty disappointing. Rolly Brings the House Down comes really darn close to being picked as my least favorite, because I didn't like how it had to rehash the cliché of let's blame everything on Mug for no reason trait into Rolly's character to make him pretty unlikable. If it wasn't for the only positive thing I have that I do enjoy the episode in an ironic manner, then I would have picked this episode in a heartbeat. Despite being very neck and neck with each other in terms of ratings, Rolly's Rovers took the spot just the slightest bit more in my opinion. Now that I have decided to choose what is my least favorite Rolly-centered episode, I have decided to let one of my online friends make a cameo in this video, and let him share his thoughts on these two episodes, and decide which one is his least favorite out of the two. Maybe his thoughts might be the same as mine, or his thoughts could be different from mine. Well, let's find out! Take it away, Mickey Fan 1909. Thank you, Hot Cloud Productions. Hello, everyone. My name is Mickey Fan 1909, and I've been brought here by my great friend Madison, aka Hot Cloud Productions, to say my thoughts on those two Rolly episodes of Bob the Builder and decide which one of those two is the worst. First off, we got Wally Brings the House Down. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. The title of this episode is kind of misleading, because Wally only knocked over the garage shelter, not a house. And the way Wally acted towards Muck after that, Jesus! Wally, just accept that you're the one responsible because you did this. And yes, I would blame Mark too for making him do it, but really, Mark has no complete involvement into it. And even when Mark tries to apologize to Rolly, he just won't forgive him and still dwells on that matter. Rolly, what happened has already happened. Forgive and forget. Just accept it and move on. You see, this is why I don't like it either. Wally should have just gotten over it. But no, 
it got to the point where he got his own bag with Muck, making him use his door as a ramp. But only after Muck broke it, Rolly instantly regretted it, realizing after that, me. <sighs> Why? Why would you make him do that? What good is that going to do to make you feel satisfied from the Gamma Shelter incident? Because let me tell you, revenge isn't sweet. Because once you got your revenge, you get nothing. No satisfaction, no nothing. Nothing at all. Now I know you're probably saying I'm being too hard on Rolly, but that's just how I feel about this episode. It is misleading and stupid. The next one I'm going to say my thoughts on is Rolly's Rover. My thoughts on this one? That too is not my cup of tea either. And why, you might ask? Because Rolly should have listened to Bob and looked at his plans instead of being too distracted with his football chants for crying out loud. And yes, he and the team managed to get some of the earth out of the way, but... But moving it around the football pitch... Slowing down the progress? And Rolly still working on his chance? Ah, <sighs> That episode is just too stupid as well. After realizing he had messed up, he finally looked at the plans properly. He came up with the idea to use his football chance to get the work done on time. But still, it could have been more better if Rolly paid attention in the first place. I mean, come on! Ah, <sighs> Rolly's character in, in this episode is just, it's just a bit off. If he hadn't been so distracted, and if he had only paid attention, he would have known what to do next. And of course, this episode had to be written by, of all bad writers. <sighs> Sharon Miller. Now that I covered my thoughts on those two episodes, it's time we decide which one of those two is the worst. I'm gonna have to say the worst will have to be Rolly Brings the House Down. Why? Because the title was slightly misleading? And the way Rolly acted towards Muck after he got the blame? Ugh. I don't know what to say. I really, really don't know what to say about it, really. Just, it's just... It's just terrible. Anyway, that is all I have to say. Thank you for listening everyone, and back over to you, Hot Cloud. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, my friend. With that said, these two episodes are far from being bad in my opinion, but at the same time, they are the weakest Rolly-centered episodes. It was honestly quite hard to choose between these two episodes because of how my feelings towards them are really similar to each other. But I was pretty confident with my choice on what is my least favorite Rolly episode. I honestly have fun doing this versus kind of video because I enjoy reviewing these two week episodes and finding out which one is my least favorite out of the two. I'm hoping to do more episode reviews like these in the future, but we'll see about that. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Press the like button and comment down on what you think is your least favorite Rolly episode in the comment section below. For my next Big Bob the Builder centric video, I'm hoping to maybe review Built to be Wild next before my summer vacation ends next month. This is Heart Cloud Productions, and I'll see you all later!